It is Tuesday. What does that mean in the grand scheme of the cosmos? Not a fucking thing. It doesn't mean shit. However, for me, it means that it's the beginning of this week's time trial. So what? What's the purpose of the time trial, Aiden? I'm glad you asked, because it's not just any time trial. I have dedicated the next three months of my life, physically, mentally, spiritually, to competing in this 10-week time attack series. It's hosted by Williams Gaming Club and Prodigy Racing, and at the end of the 10 weeks, the 12 fastest drivers get to compete for a seat in a real-life series. Do I belong there? I honestly have no idea, but I'm gonna try my best to get there. Last week, it took us 500 laps to barely squeeze into the top 12. I cannot be doing that every week. This week, I am really focusing on cutting down the amount of time that I'm putting in and trying to maximize the results, efficiency, if you will. Let's take a look first at what this competition actually looks like. Williams Gaming Club and Prodigy Racing teamed up. Two ways to get into the finals. Top 36 of the iRacing Normal MX5 Cup Series or top 12 in the PRL Time Attack Series. They follow the same track schedule and at the end of the 10 weeks, all 48 drivers are split up into two finals races where the winner gets a Prodigy Pass. Last week, some of you guys in the comments were asking me how I avoid burnout or how does racing still seem fun to you if you know you're doing so many laps i was prepared to give you guys like the secret to staying motivated and staying and, and keeping that enjoyment of uh, driving it's not exactly how this week went for me though i got a uh, pretty humbled by reality yeah this was a tough one another 5k 6.9 miles per hour gets you to a 28 minute 5k so anybody trying to do like a sub 30 minute 5k set the treadmill to 6.9 funnily enough it's like perfect 28 minutes good start to the week good start to the week dude it has been a rough day it's day two i basically didn't do anything on day one I, day one started and ended with editing i've been sitting in the parking lot at the gym for probably 25 minutes drinking some pre-workout i did do a run yesterday which was good but uh it's 4 30 p.m I need to fucking start doing shit dude start doing some shit come on let's start doing some shit it wasn't until like the end of day two that I actually got ready to put in my first laps on this track, sadly. So longer than I would have liked to start. Got back from the gym just now. We've got some time to learn the track. I've got a couple of friends who are gonna hop in and we're gonna learn it with, and then we'll do our best to put a time on the board. I'm not really planning on being super competitive today in terms of time, uh, really just trying to learn the track. And typically when I learn the track, I'll spend a day just driving it, enjoying the track, enjoying the car, and then really hone in on specific corners and where to find time out of each sector a bit later. Before we hop in, take a look at the current standings. And it looks like uh, the two, it's the same guy at the top as last week, Elvis Rankin, who's a pro in the Porsche Cup. He set a 38.32. And then P12 is, oh, 39 flat. All we have to do right now is break into the 38s and we should be good to get in the top 12 at least to start. I'm sure it'll probably move down to like high 37s by the end of the week. Sim is set up. Joey is already on, so we're gonna hop in and join him. Let's go. Okay, so I just did like six laps. No track map, no nothing. Just kind of feeling the track out myself. Not great. We got to, where's my freaking mouse at, dude? We drove 14 laps actually, and here are the times. By lap 13, we were doing mid 39s. So about a second off of where we need to be. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up a track guide, see if there's anything I can take from that, and then kind of mesh it with how I'm feeling on the track right now. Not gonna send it on a time trial just yet, just gonna do some open practice. And once I get down to the 38s, I'm gonna try and put a time on the board. I'm driving. Okay. 
So coming into turn one, I'm already noticing that he is turning in here. So that is what I was doing. But look at when he's braking. He's braking after he turns in. So watch his brake down here. Turns in and then brakes. Okay, down to third. This is, I was doing that. He lifts off of the brakes over that first curve back on. Same thing as me. The line through here is similar. However, he is not going down to first gear. For those of you who don't drive the Miata that often, gear selection is super important. It can completely unsettle or give you rotation depending on what you're looking for. And it also heavily affects your speed down straights. Let's take a brief look at corner two. Coming into corner two, road coming up here, watch his braking. Braking right before the road, down to second. He's turning in as he brakes. He's not braking in a totally straight line. And then let's take a look at his line. So he goes deep here looking for a late apex staying in second once again and it's pretty heavy braking and then pretty quickly back on to the throttle i'm sure everybody has a different process for learning a track but for me this is generally what it is i'll drive some laps i'll watch a hot lap to look at the gearing and braking points just to kind of compare them to mine and once i get a general idea then i'll really try and seek out little tiny things you can do on the track to gain time i'm going to run some laps and focus on, for now, the first two corners. Once I feel comfortable there, I'm gonna focus on the next two, and then the next two, all of the way around the track, and then we'll go back over and try and optimize them. I'll be going between running laps and then watching this lap on my phone to just double check and secure in my head what I did wrong there or what I could have done better. Uh, I just did like 20 laps in practice and I got down to a 38.7. Now, the practice session is typically a better track temp than the time attack. So I'm going to hop into my first time attack. For the duration of this week, I definitely want to make an effort to try and be healthier about how much I'm driving. I want to drive less and with more purpose. So I'm going to set a limit for myself of like 45 laps tonight. And that is it. That's like an hour of driving roughly. Let's get in this bitch. First time trial of the week. Uh, I'm going to use this one to really just kind of show you guys this track and my view of how I'm going to be driving this track throughout the week. So kind of give you like my own little personal track guide. Like last week, the time attack starts you halfway around the track. So you have to drive half of the track and then another full lap to warm up the tires. So we are about to approach a flying lap, which is lap number 10 in this session, slowing down extra for this final corner to make sure we get a really good exit, which is not what you would typically do there on a flying lap. And let's cover the entire track briefly. So heading in to turn number one the braking marker is the second part of this road on the right side you turn in before you brake and it's where the road kind of comes back so right there down to third lift off the brakes get back onto the brakes in the middle of this corner aim for where the green meets meets the uh, red and white curbing right there with your right tire and it should kind of set you up for a really nice line you build throttle just as the car starts to push away from that curb and then you push yourself back towards it you can use all of this runoff on the left side coming into the next braking zone and we're braking just before the end of this kind of gray curbing on the right side before that road comes in turning in again early and just controlling the car all of the way through there trying to have a slightly late apex not too late as this car it's important in the miata to maintain speed all of the way through the corner so it's not like the porsche where you just aim for a late apex and slow down early turning in before the third one of those bollards and you kind of want to just barely miss we're still full throttle lift as we hit that curb or as we miss that curb back onto throttle as we hit that second curb and then we lift again and begin braking as we we come off of this curbing and we want to aim for the right tire to just about hit that bollard right there it should push us slightly wide and then we cut back for a little bit of a late apex here getting back on the throttle staying in second gear through there using all of the runoff on the left side now corner number eight nine and ten fuck these corners braking as we come off of that second curb and it's just a light break as you come off of there and then you want to avoid this curb on the right side get your right tire as close as you possibly can and you really want to be building throttle by the time you hit that or by the time your car lines up with that sauce Use all of the curbing on the left side or all of the runoff on the left side. Next corner, we're braking just before we cross underneath this bridge and then lifting, getting on the throttle before we hit that curbing. Lifts to turn the car and getting back on throttle. As long as you keep two tires on the red and white curbing there, you're all good. Final little set of corners, lifting at this dirt patch and aiming for, aiming to actually hit this sausage curb on the inside with the right tire slightly. You can get a tire in the dirt there. 
final corner, enter all four tires over this, this like into this green. Just keep your left tire from going into the dirt at the end of it. And then as you turn in, you kind of want to get on the throttle early, but still have a slightly late apex aiming for this curbing. And this will kind of give you an idea of what that looks like. Really, really tricky corner. You have to balance the uh, the entry and the exit speed really well. You, if you prior, prioritize either of those, you lose time. So 38.96 for our first lap or our first, uh, our, our best lap in our first time trial. Okay, so we did 16 laps and check it out. Check out where we got to with only 16 laps. P11, so we're in the top 12 for right now. We got a 38.9 uh, top time. You can see right there is a 38.3 Elvis Rankin, same guy. Day three, holy hell, it's day three. Okay, so I was expecting to move down. Um, I did move down, not as much as I expected to be honest. We got shuffled down from P11 to P12. So that could have been way, way worse. Right now, if I were to gain, let's say like two tenths, three tenths, I would be moved up to around P7, P6. If somebody put a gun against my head and said I had to guess what the times are gonna be by the end of the week, I would say that to be within the top 12, I'm probably gonna need a 38.5. Today, I'm gonna try and move down to a 38.5 gonna get serious today about it and really push into learning the secrets of this track but before that my girlfriend made me pre-workout this morning she woke me up by pressing this cold bottle of juice against my back so that was pleasant I'm gonna go do a run she's gonna do her workout and then we will be back and get underway it's pretty early today so we have a lot of time and it feels really really freaking good outside so I'm excited to spend time in the sim today on the way back from the gym and even to my biggest, biggest weakness, got some donut holes. Really any type of donut is my biggest weakness, but these make me feel better about eating donuts because they're so small. They're just trying to use the bathroom. Two. Some privacy. Okay, time for you to get down. Run away, be free. Back from the gym and ready to get to work. A Little bit of extra motivation because we got kicked down to P13. So I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna use that as motivation to get us back up. It's sim time, bitches. So we didn't need much here to get back into the top 12 and I didn't wanna push myself too hard. This is only lap number three. I'm really just looking for any type of improvement here and gonna try and keep that improvement up throughout the entirety of the week. Really good run around the second braking zone, which tended to be one of my more difficult uh, corners or one of the more difficult corners for me. You wanna avoid that inside curbing just about as much as you can. It's hard to describe like that. It, it, should, it looks like a simple hairpin, but it was honestly really difficult to nail. We did end up basically gaining a ton of time just in that corner and it would better our time by a whole tenth, which was enough for me to uh, call it quits on this session. Okay, it is now 4.47 p.m. So it's been a few hours or a couple of hours and we moved our time up just barely. We're into a 38 0.885, which is still P13, so outside of the top 12. Another thing I wanted to briefly cover is racing. So the finals, right, it's not a time trial. It is racing, wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing in the Miatas, which if you guys have never driven the MX-5, the racing is absolutely insane. It's extremely close. People will take every opportunity to get a position on you. And especially in a finale race like this, where the only position that matters is P1. Everybody is just going for P1. So they're gonna fight tooth and nail for every single opportunity. I want to be prepared for that. Right now, I think I've done like three or four Miata races. So I really wanna try this week to start putting in more Miata races, sort of as practice for my time trials. I'm saying all this because I just did one of those races. Yeah, this is, uh, well, uh, by that face, you could probably tell that the race didn't go well. It's not looking bad at this point. We're P3, 38.7, not bad. Still half of a second behind P1, more than half of a second. Uh, but I was 
pretty satisfied with starting p3 a decent start uh good enough to at least maintain our position p5 actually ended up getting a really good start and challenging p4 for his position so this is that scenario and p5 is this brazilian car we're looking at here he's going up around the outside into turn one and as he makes his way around i kind of go deep so i can't totally blame that on him he runs into the back of me and ends up sending me wide ignoring the fiasco going on behind us so move down to p5 no damage uh just you know a, a slightly worse place to be starting but it's okay there's a lot of time left in the race it's a 13 minute race eight laps and i did feel like i had some decent pace once i got locked in i was being pretty cautious on cold tires you can see the guy ahead of me driving into the dirt and we're only about halfway through the first lap and there's quite a big gap behind me so i didn't think I was going to be any under any pressure from that direction so I was taking it very smooth really just looking for exits right now and hoping that the car ahead of me would look too much for entry as you kind of tend to do sometimes when you're being chased down and end up giving a position on one of the straights potentially the grid straight right here the pitch straight so he is definitely trying to break as little as possible through there I'm doing the opposite hunting for an exit end up getting it that plus the slipstream gives me a super good run as we cross onto lap number two I'm all over and moving to the inside of turn one and this should give me some sort of opportunity if I could hang this around I could potentially well yeah, that was that was kind of how that one went. And I was a bit confused as to what happened. We're going to take a look back. I think it was just him turning it a little bit too harshly for the big. I mean, I even, I'm even actually breaking slightly early for that. But I mean, yeah, you can see he's literally aiming at the apex right there. So not really leaving us any type of room there. And he ends up shipping us around sideways. And this is how Miata races kind of tended to go for me at the start. I think I just wasn't great at avoiding people at, at this time. And it will get better, but uh, we're down into P7 now with quite a large gap, about a five second gap between ourselves and P6. And in Miatas, it's very hard to close that gap. So skipping all of the way to the end. Yeah, we finished there in P7. I hope the finale is not like that. To cheer myself up, I got back into the time trials, and despite the fact that that race didn't go in my favor, I still learned a lot from uh, just driving on my own in race conditions, which are better conditions than this time trial, so I felt a lot faster. And by the time lap 25 had come around, you can see I'm setting purple sector, so I'm lowering my optimum, uh, but I was struggling a lot on this session in particular, getting around this chicane where on the exit, I would just barely barely drive wide there and ruin so many good laps this is lap number 30 so i put quite a few laps in at this point and i actually end up getting a really really solid run through this corner corner 8 9 10 which as the week goes on will prove to be my worst corner by far through that chicane though that i was mentioning earlier and once again do just about the exact same thing it's really hard to tell how close we're getting but if you can see there we are just about two inches over on both sides over the red and white curbing so that discounts that lap by the time lap 35 came around i was basically just struggling all over the track i'm not sure if it was a little bit of burnout or just me not mentally being all there but i'm sliding way too much through that final corner and this was actually an out lap uh, so messing up my run around that final corner means my next lap is probably toasted so i just parked the car and this would happen more often than you would think and i would reset yeah, and basically just waste time like that. And I mean, you can see looking at the laps, there's a, a lot of large gaps where no times were set. I eventually set a 38.6, which was a new best for us, but it didn't change our position. It's Friday, baby. I am going to a Porter Robinson con Porter Porter Robinson concert tonight, who I freaking adore. I've listened to every one of his songs more times than I can count. As far as the time trial is concerned, I'm not going to have that much time to drive it today. I'm going to put in as much as I can, hopefully about an hour, which should be around 20 or 30 good laps, aiming for a 38.5 because I think that that is a time that will stick throughout the entirety of the week, and I don't have a lot of time left in my week to dedicate to the time trial, sadly. I've got an endurance event tomorrow, six hours of road Atlanta with Joey in the LMP2, so I need to prep for that. I Honestly, I have not done nearly as much of that as I should have. And for that endurance event tomorrow, I'm a bit concerned because this is what Joey's POV currently looks like. <laughs> But I am going to go, actually, I'm not going to go to the gym. 
I'm going to do a home workout instead because the gym is too far and it's just going to be too much time right now to do that. And like I said, I'm on a bit of a tight schedule. I'm just going to do some push-ups, uh, some planks, squats, and some pike push-ups, most likely just in my room to save on time. See when I get back. Okay, I got to go drive. Oh my God. Oh, hello. You want to keep the camera? <laughs> What? <laughs> we didn't have a ton of time to drive today, but I actually cut my workout slightly short so that I could extend it as much as possible. My goal for this session was to get into the 38 fives, which I thought would be really easy because yesterday I did a 38 six. My optimum lowered dramatically. This lap that you're watching right now, lap number eight, was a good lap all around. Really good final sector there, and I was expecting it to be pretty decent. Uh, I guess it was decent lap number 15 um so this is actually it's it's like 10 laps later almost uh what eight laps later but this is my next flying lap that's how long it took me between flying laps and at the very least i began to find myself being consistent consistently nailing this sector at least which tended to be the harder sector but also consistently falling short so 38 7 for that lap lap number 31 this is vastly down the line now i'm 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 definitely not burning out, but I think I was getting frustrated that my laps just continued to be around like that 38.8, 38.7, which is about two tenths short. And a lot of time I was losing that time in the final two sectors. So 38.79, once again, lap number 34 comes around. And for this one, I decided I was gonna try something different because I mean, if I keep doing the same thing, right? And I keep getting the same time, something needs to change. So for this lap, I turned off all of my HUD and I actually drive with the Delta bar on. So that was on then I turned it off as well through the first corner just looking at the track driving it like I would if I were to go to a track day or you know a go-kart track uh, just trying to hit apexes and not really paying so much attention to the small numbers and margins just trying to get on the throttle as early as I possibly can and get on the brake as lately as late and as light as I can while still maintaining a rotation so far everything has been looking good this next corner is where my laps would tend to begin to fall apart However, with no HUD on, everything just felt really easy. Like I was just enjoying driving, hunting apexes. And sometimes I think you need to just turn all your stuff off and just drive. Weirdest thing just happened. I drove 50 something laps and I constantly was getting so close to my optimum, but I just could not quite break into it. I would have like two sectors that match my optimum or even beat my optimum in one sector and then lose time in another. And so I decided to try something. I turned off all of my HUD. I turned everything off on my HUD and I just drove like I was driving at a go-kart track. And you won't believe what happened. Just driving like a, like a, when you drive it like an actual car, like I'm actually on a track, look at this. But boom, I just beat my time by two tenths. I was plus point zero, I was one hundredth away from my optimum. I've still got an hour to practice for Road Atlanta, so I'm gonna move over into the LMP2. We're just gonna let that 38.5 stand and uh, let's get some practice in for the race tomorrow because Lord knows I uh, do not wanna let Joey down. We are officially up into P7. I am 100% sure that that is not gonna stand as P7. I feel like that'll probably be the barrier by the end of the week, like P12 will probably be uh, 0.5 flat or something so we're gonna have to do some improvement but not right now i'm happy with p7 i think the strategy of driving some free practice and like race for practice is working a lot better because i think i only did 100 laps so far not even i think i've done like 80 laps or somewhere around there this will probably be the way i continue to drive moving forward instead of just driving 500 laps i'm gonna really put time in races and put time in like open practices driving against people and with people to kind of push you that way also driving with the relative off i don't know if that's any type of secret sauce or if the stars just aligned for me right there but uh it just felt more natural driving with, with the relative off and just focusing on the track Time for Road Atlanta in the LMP2. I was running on around two hours of sleep-ish, and uh, I only had to drive three hours, so it was a six-hour race split between me and Joey. 
and I'll just show you very briefly how that went. So we'll start at the beginning, six hours of Road Atlanta, Quali P5, and Joey is currently in the car. There we are, the peanut butter jelly red and blue LMP2. Lap number one, let's get underway. Up the inside of the guy on P6, ends up going side by side with the guy in P4, so challenging him, slightly backing out into the top of the S's. No rush to get anything done. It is a six hour race. There's also GT3s in this race, which we will eventually run into. Out of the S's, Joey gets a really good run, and by the time we head towards that that uh, right-hander that leads up to that back straight. Joey actually finds himself side by side around the outside and he's just about gonna make it work. Just barely ahead as they head onto the straight. Car on the inside slides out a bit, makes a little bit of contact, but nothing major. Affects himself a lot more than it affects Joey. So Joey maintains the lead there. He's holding the inside or what will be the inside for this upcoming chicane. The car behind him pushing him along eventually moves to the inside as Joey kind of moves to the outside to open this up for himself. And he swings around the outside effectively getting himself off of the two cars behind and they're kind of left to fight each other. So he actually moves up all of the way into P4 on lap one. It was a really good start to this race. Now, by the time lap number eight comes around, we're halfway through the GT3s at this point. So we're trying to navigate that. We're on the tail of P3 and uh, he slides out. P5 ends up hitting us. And then here comes P6 up the inside. Massive speed difference, gaining two positions. We are now side by side with this guy fighting for P6. So it went from fighting for P3 for P6 in like one quarter. He swings across the inside at the top of the hill, ends up making contact with us and you can be the judge but uh race or actually you can't be the judge because race control deemed that an accident on those guys so they got a penalty however that still does move us from battling for p6 all the way back to i think we're in like p18 or p19 out of 20 cars here so that really affected us and that was the beginning of a long slope downhill However, Joey is back on track. He's at the back of the pack and coming out of the S's, massive crash ahead, bumper flying around, almost runs into, I think that was a Ferrari, manages to get out of the way just in time, doesn't touch anything. Insane save by Joey. Here's another view of that. The reaction times are absolutely mental there. Great job on him to avoid that. Sadly, we are still down to the back of the pack now from that accident. Lap full number 63. Yellow, you hear Nine, that? There's a full course eight. yellow. Okay, Seven, when he counts to one, six, you have to be five, on pit four, limiter at pit speed. Three, on number one, two, two one. one. We are in the full course yellow. Nice, Please okay. <laughs> this is lap 63. Three, this... two, one. We are in the full course yellow. He was going Please 180 kph when he was supposed to be going, I think 72 kph was the speed for that. So unfortunately he runs into the back of us. That was a lapped car by the way, and he gives us damage. Six minutes of repairs to fix that damage. So that put us massively back by quite a few laps. I think at this point we're like five laps down, four laps down. Uh, maybe more. Lap 96, I am now in the car trying to fight our way back up slowly just to get overtakes done when we can. This is the lapped car ahead of us. He's like, well, we're lap unlapping ourselves from him up the inside. And I was too focused on unlapping ourselves. I actually forgot to pit right there. And that would be a problem because as I come around turn one, you'll hear the engine begin to sputter as I'm trying to go up this hill. And that's because I ran out of gas. I was supposed to fuel that supposed to fuel my car. Totally forgot. And this would put us back another couple of laps because I think it's like a two minute tow. P12, somehow we ended up in P12. It was a shit show. It was absolutely horrific. We had to stop taking it like super seriously. I think it was like seven or eight laps in. So yeah, we kind of drove the rest of it just for fun. Made some good overtakes. Still P7 with our time, so it stands. I'm gonna take a nap. over here to film with me? <laughs> I don't actually know what day it is right now. You can probably hear that there's a party going on next door to me. I've had struggles trying to get myself down and get lap times in, mostly because there's just been... <laughs> oh my god. There's just been a lot of other stuff going on. It's been chaotic. I've been up to like 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m. on different nights. I think it's like 7 p.m. right now, 6 p.m., and I finally have time to put in some work and try and better our lap times again because we got knocked down to P9 from P7. So our uh, P7 position finally fell. However, we only need, we need less than a tenth to go up and back into P7. Uh, if we could get like a tenth and a half or two tenths, we would move way up, but uh, that's a little bit optimistic.
So this will be my first session in like two days. Um, it's probably gonna take me some time to get locked back into the pace, but we're gonna do everything we can. It's almost two o'clock in the morning. Last time I checked in with you guys, we were in P9. And since then I've done about 90 laps, give or take. And look where it got me. I failed basically. Uh, we are now in P11, still same time. All of the times are starting to come down. We're only, a, we're about a 10th off of like P6. So we still have a lot of room to improve and my optimum is coming down at the same time. Oh, it's just not gonna happen for us tonight and tomorrow is the last day. Let's get some sleep so that we can come back strong. Welcome to the final day. It is day seven. We have about seven and a half hours until the time trial ends for this week. And I've got some work to do. We have been funneled down all of the way to P15. Now we ha currently have a 38.57. Although yes, it looks like we're super far off. We're really not that far. Uh, it, it is gonna be difficult to get that 10th. I think that's kind of like the barrier for what is difficult at the moment is to break into the 38.4s. That seems to be like a big point of contention, uh, but I think we can do it. So I'm gonna spend about the next two hours just grinding it out. We just got back from the gym, so I've got that out of the way. I'm energized, I've got some water, and uh, it's time to make the shit work for ourselves. I could not have anticipated how much more difficult this would be than I assumed. So we have we had like seven hours left before the time trial closed, and I only needed a tenth. I didn't think that was gonna be that big of a deal. I had been driving well in my previous sessions, but I, I, I could not expect this to be what it was. Was it worth it? I mean, just take a look at the first uh, few laps here and you'll notice that I didn't even set a time until lap 11 and the time wasn't great and you'll see where it falls short as I come around the first corner and I had actually been driving very well through the entirety of the first sector. So that first corner and then the second braking zone, both of them, I was just about on par with my Delta constantly with my optimum. So I was feeling really good, but every single time I came up to corners eight, nine and 10, I would hit that curb. And it doesn't look like I'm losing much time from that. But when that tire gets lifted up, you get a little bit of extra rotation as you come off of it, but not enough grip. You end up scrubbing your tires, losing speed. And most of the time, I would just not even finish driving whenever that happened. Lap number 27 and coming up to the same corner. Once again, we are going to struggle in the opposite direction. We slid way too much trying to avoid that curb and we end up losing a lot of time that way. We don't set another good lap until lap 47. And you'll notice that that lap is red and that it is worse than my current best time. I want to cover this lap because this lap seemed like it was going to be perfect. Our run through turn one was beautiful. We're on course with our optimum. Our run through corners eight, nine, and 10 for the first time this session. It's like 47 laps in. First time this session, we don't slide, we don't go too wide, and we don't hit that curb. However, coming up to the final corner, it is so, it's difficult to even see but we over slow a bit through that final corner and, uh, and a little bit more as well. I'm gonna show you guys, like it, it doesn't look like it, but let's take a look at corners number 13 and 14 of, of that lap. And we're comparing that lap to our current best, which is a 0.577. I don't know why it says 7.9. And heading into this final sector, I was almost an entire tenth up on that lap. Now looking at the throttle, the red is the lap we just set, and you can see I was way too aggressive on throttle there, and I'm getting on throttle late. Uh, that you, that re is reflected in my speed. You can see the blue lap speed cuts ahead there, so I start to lose time, but most of the time is lost into the braking for the final corner. This is really obvious to see when you look at the time right there. So almost a full tenth up heading into that final corner, and then we lose all of that time and more. And I think that mostly has to do with our braking curve. The red is the one we just saw and you can see that I'm braking for a longer amount of time and right as I as my braking begins to exceed that that blue braking I lose a huge amount of time I also have to get on the throttle slightly later and that causes this final bit of time to scrub away now that wasn't the end of the session even though it was my best lap time I did another 60 laps and none of them none of them exceeded that 
Uh, that was the only lap. Out of 101 laps, that one that we just saw was the only one where I nailed corners 8, 9, and 10. And I think a big problem with the fact that I keep resetting whenever I mess those corners up was the fact that I kind of forgot how to drive this final sector. I wouldn't get to it at full pace. And when I did get to it on my outlap, that was like the only time I had to practice it on an outlap. And I'm going at a slower speed on outlaps to make sure I get a good run for my next lap. Eventually, like I didn't even leave this session. I just drove until it bugged out. Like it literally froze on me because I exceeded the three hour time attack limit. I was actually starting to lose my mind. But we only had three hours left now to try and set a time. So I had to get back into another time trial session and continue to attempt this. Practicing that corner on my outlap, I knew that that was going to be the crux of this entire day and that my, my time and place would hinge on that corner. So lap number two, this is our first flying lap. Yeah. Not a great way to start our final time trial session. Uh, immediately resetting, and then on the very next flying lap that we get out to, I am now messing up sector one again. So this is my second time messing up sector one. I don't know what was going on. I think I was thinking too much about corners eight, nine, and 10. And then I was also worried that if I did ever hook them up, I was gonna mess up that final sector again. So I began driving like really poor first sectors just so I could work on the middle sector and the back sector. Uh, and I, I began to lose touch with the first sector actually, coming through the middle, just trying to avoid that curb, sliding way too much, which kind of seemed to be like the other thing I would do as soon as I uh, if I did avoid that curb, I would slide way too much. I'm not using enough of the exit. I'm over slowing through that final corner. And by this point where we were beginning to run out of time, I had done lap after lap after lap and it started to turn mindless. I feel like time was, was moving by like twice as fast as it typically was because I would spend most of my time driving out laps and then messing up like the first sector of my flying lap. And then I have to reset. Every now and then I would just go ahead and do a full lap, even though it would be total ass, so I didn't forget how to drive the final two sectors of the track. But regardless, I had to change something. I had to change something. Insanity is uh, like doing the same thing the same way a bunch of times and expecting it to be different, right? So. I had had a talk with a couple of different people who had been watching me drive throughout the day, and both of them told me that my problem through corners 8, 9, and 10 is that I was using third gear, which I didn't really see to be a problem, but I tried it. I tried their way. I tried using second. I was still hitting that curb, but as I did it more and more, I began to find that the car didn't slide as much. I didn't have to throw the car out wide so much because using the, the um, gear change would kind of help rotate the car a little bit. So that in pairing with a little bit of braking would rotate the car. And as I practiced it more and more, I, they were right. I started to find myself gaining time all of the way down the straight from the exit of turn number 10. And here's an example of it just kind of started to hook up, like getting really close to that curb, but avoiding it, keeping grip. And at this point, all of the practice I had done with this was really like on out laps or laps that were kind of throwaway laps, like not full pace laps. So I decided to try and implement it into a flying lap and see how it served us. Into corner one, breaking late, cutting around, beautiful, catching grip and getting on the throttle early. Heading into the next braking zone, slightly late apex, still getting on the throttle early, neutral steering upon entry, let the uh, the car kind of rotate itself. Once that weight gets to the outside tire, the car will spin around as long as you set it up correctly. Lifting at that curb, slight brake, back on throttle at that curb, braking just as you come off of that curb. Again, very slightly late apex. You're, you're still kind of hugging that corner all of the way around, but you do want to kind of cut back at one point for it. We're going full pace at this point. This is my first time trying this. Down to second. The car is not losing grip. It's not hitting the curb. I got so excited, I just parked the car right there because I kind of messed up the first sector. But it didn't matter because I felt confident now in corners eight, nine, and 10. As long as I could do okay in the first sector, okay in the final sector, and nail corners eight, nine, and 10, I should be able to find some sort of improvement. 
At this point, there is less than an hour left of the time trial. I think I was in like P18 or P19. People had been putting times in constantly and the times were so, so close. Like I only needed a 10th and I would move up like 10 positions or something absurd. I needed a very small improvement. Braking late, down to second gear, try and get that right tire over the green and red and white where it meets, run back to the curb, let the car kind of open itself up here, but try to avoid the dirt, loses you grip there, into the next braking zone. Neutral steering, let the car kind of steer itself until you sort of find that exit, pitch it in just enough, and then return to center as you open up that exit. Heading towards the bollards, turning in just before that third one, Lifting at that curb, slight, slight break back onto the throttle. As you come over this final curb, you're going to go down a second. Keep it tight here. Just a little bit of separation early on in this corner, but keep it tight all of the way through. Get on throttle earlier than you might think. Oh, God. It's look. The lap is looking good. Down a second. We avoid the curb. Okay. <laughs> oh. Okay, at this point the lap is going really, really well. We are almost out of time. Do not f fuck this last sector. Oh, watching this back. Don't go off track, don't go off track, not off track. Okay, lift and turn, simple here. On throttle early, on throttle early, take that curb. Open this corner up. looks like any other lap. It looks like any other lap. Oh. Dude, that was a grind and a half. But boom, finally. Oh, yes, sir. P10 again with, what do we have? I don't know, we have like a, uh, 50 minutes to go, it might not stand. I cannot express how relieved I am and how close I was to giving up. I did lap after 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 lap up to 300 laps today. And I was messing up the same corner every single time. I was trying different lines. I even tried different gears uh, for a while. And eventually I found out the problem and it was different gears and I was just doing it. I, I, I had gotten closer to it earlier, but I still wasn't doing it totally correctly. So I finally figured it out. I strung an entire lap together. Thank God. I'm just so excited that I did, or I, I'm just so happy that I didn't give up because I was super close to giving up on that. Like. After that many laps, that was very close. I mean, I, I, yeah. <sighs> this was a much, much tougher week than last week. And it, weirdly enough, I thought it was going to be a lot of it. I thought it was going to be a much easier week earlier on. And as it went on, it just got harder and harder. Right there in P11. P10 just got us by, what, less than, by two thousands. He got us by two thousands. So P11 and P10, our results so far, uh, still, once again, the most laps driven. <laughs> it's just what it is. We're doing what we have to do. And that's gonna be it for us this week. Let's take one final look at the standings and overall we're actually P9. So we managed to get in the top 10 twice uh, more than somebody. I mean, there must have been like a rotation. Somebody got in top 10 last week that didn't get in this week and vice versa. So we move up to P9, P10 in the first week, P11 in the second week. Overall, we're P9. Taking a look down at Joey as he has kind of missed both of these weeks uh, quite a bit. So he's in P40 at the moment. He definitely has some work to do and he is, I've talked to him. He said he's locking him this week. So expect to see big things from Joey moving forward. Now, next week, we do have Sakuba. Uh, Sakuba... 2000 full. I absolutely love this track. I actually feel really confident here. Tune in then to see how it goes. Although it's not the best time.